As you apply keywords and mark portions of a clip favorite or rejected, what you're doing is providing more data to Final Cut to help it present the media back to you a certain way. So marking a portion with a keyword will apply that keyword to that specific part of a clip. But when you import your clips, depending on where they came from, there's a lot of data attached to those clips. And that data is usually called metadata. So how do you view the metadata inside a Final Cut? Well, with a clip selected, we're going to want to open the inspector. And you open the inspector using Command-4 on the keyboard, or you can hit this little button at the top right on the toolbar, and that will show the inspector. And below the toolbar, there's different inspectors. We're in the video inspector right now. But we're actually going to click on this little I, which is the information inspector. And this is where all of the info for a selected clip is displayed. And depending on how your Final Cut system is set up, you're going to see different information here. So with our clip selected, and I've just selected this one, which is the name of this clip is 4654. Uh, so that's the name of a clip. We can see the date it was modified. I see notes, all kinds of information here, right? So this is all metadata that's applied to a clip. And for some editors, they really like to see this information. For others, it's too much and not anything that's helpful to you. So hopefully I can break up the inspector for you and make this a little bit more useful. So let's go down the list here. So all the way at the top of this inspector is the name of the clip. And on the right side of it, you're going to see the duration for this entire clip. So this clip is 2 minutes, 55 seconds, and 7 frames long. We can see that its frame size is 1920 by 1080, and it was shot at 24 frames per second. That's what the 24p is. This data is very useful and can be helpful if you don't know if this clip is 24 or not. Instead of switching to the list view, trying to find that frame rate, you can just find it right here inside of the inspector. On the right side, we see some of the audio settings. We see it's mono audio. It was not recorded in stereo, but it was recorded at 48 kilohertz. We can see below the frame size the color space this was recorded in, which is Rec. 709. So I know it's not an HDR clip because it doesn't have any high dynamic range options there. So that's some of the basic information for a clip. Below that, we're going to see a view that shows us all types of information. Now this view is going to change depending on what you have selected. So all the way at the bottom of the inspector, notice where, for me, it says extended down here. This is the view. So usually you'll see either the basic or the general view. Those are the most common views to have displayed. But depending on which metadata view is selected, you're going to see different fields at the top here. So let me start with the basic view, because these are some of the most common metadata fields you'll want to have access to. But we see the name of the clip, and this is editable. I can actually click on this and make a change to the name of the clip. Making a change here is the same as clicking on the name here in the browser and changing it. So if I wanted to add something to this clip, uh, maybe I wanted to add night into the name of the clip. I'll hit return. It adds it in the browser, and it's also changed here in the name in the inspector. And then you'll notice at the top there, too, it, it changed it. So some of this data is editable. If it's something that you can't change, it'll kind of be grayed out, like the start and end points, the duration of the clip, the codec it was recorded at. Um, that's something I can't change with those clips because that's data coming off the files themselves. But something like the notes field, I could go in here and type in any notes I want. And you can apply that and use that data however you want. You can use that field for anything, really. So below that, we see the video roles. And we're going to talk more about roles when we're on the timeline and organizing. But essentially, what role does the video play and what role does the audio play for this clip? For example, with audio, I can see this clip is the, this shot where we have our characters talking to each other. So it makes sense that the audio role is set to dialogue. 
But let's say this clip was of a band and they had music playing and we were actually going to use that music in some of our video and part of our video. We want to mark that as music instead of marking it as dialogue. We'd want to mark it as music. And that'll actually color code the audio depending on which role is selected. So for now, this is a dialogue uh, shout. So we're going to keep it at dialogue. Same thing for video. It's just a video. So we're going to keep it as that role. But this is one place you can see what role this clip has been set as and, and a place you could go in and change it. So we saw some of the metadata for the timing. The audio channels are here. We even have a camera name if we wanted to name this specific camera. And if this is a 360 project, if you're working with VR content that's 360 degrees, you have options to change that in here as well. Uh, we won't be looking at that too much, but it is there as an option. So that's the basic view. What about the general view? The general view includes some things that I really like, which is the the reel, the scene, the take, the angle number, all this stuff for cameras, which can be very helpful. So we named using keywords the scene name, but we can actually go in here. I'm going to click on one of these clips and then use Command A to select all of the clips. And I'll see I'm inspecting 165 items. And I can actually go down here and then type in the scene name. So I know this is scene one. I'm going to call it scene one. I'll go to scene three here, Command A to select them all. I'm going to call it scene three. Go to scene four, do the same thing. Click on one of them, Command A. I see multiple things are selected, and I'm going to do scene. Uh, this is scene four. Hit return. So what that does by applying the metadata to it is if I go back up here to my overtime event, and I click on the little view here, you might have seen that we can group these based on that scene number. And this has nothing to do with the keyword that's applied to it. It's all about what's applied as the scene name. And this is really nice, right? I can go in and close all these if I want to um, and just hide these. If I do shift option, I can close them all. And then we see all those clips that are scene one, scene three, scene four, based on that scene number. We can also see some of these things have a scene name called SFX. Like it has a weird scene name. So if I select that audio clip, I can see that name was put in there, both a real name and a scene name probably off of the audio recording instrument that was on set. So if this is not something I need, I can actually delete that, hit tab to go to the next field, and you'll see it removes uh, that. So same thing, each of these, I could command select each of these and delete that scene name. Let me put it in a space, and then we'll go and delete it. Played all of these sound effects. This all came off of the, um, the audio recording devices that they were using is probably the Atmos recorder. Yeah, seven. So all all of those are not useful to me. So when you have multiple items selected, you can hit the space bar to mark them all with a space as the scene name and then go back and delete that scene name. And now all of those clips have just no data yet applied to the scene number. So it might be, might be a little bit confusing, but that's one way to use metadata to uh, kind of group your clips and applying that data here in the inspector. So those are a couple of the fields there. Now, the next thing, I don't want to dive too much into this and show you every little thing, but we did look at the bottom here how you can change between these different metadata views. You can also go in here and add custom metadata fields. And when you do that, you can actually name these fields anything you want and apply a description. And I'm just going to call this test for now and hit OK. And what you'll see is we actually have a custom test metadata field listed here. So if there's data that you're applying maybe into the notes, you can actually go through and apply it to a custom metadata field instead of to the notes themselves. So for example, in this audio clip here, they actually put a note that says overtime day three. So you might want to have a date recorded, which day the, record, the recording actually happened. So you can add a custom metadata field. We'll call it uh, shoot day. And we'll just call it the shoot day, and it's the day number that 
Uh, this was shot on. And so now I have a shoot day, so instead of writing all these long notes that uh, can be very confusing, I can now have a custom metadata field, and I can call it day three. I can get rid of this note, um, and now I know that this was from shoot day number three, and that can be listed there. So custom metadata fields can be helpful if you have a lot of extra data that you're trying to put in there. Many editors don't, so don't worry if this doesn't seem useful. Many editors don't find a need for those additional metadata fields because there's so many included uh, on the list here. At the bottom, you can edit the metadata view. So if you want to edit what's being displayed, hit Edit Metadata View. You'll get this Metadata Views window. We can see each of our various options, and then uh, these are the views on the left column. And on the right side, we see all of the different parameters that are available. And so this is why those custom metadata fields might not be too uh, helpful for you because chances are there's one built in that you're actually going to want to use here. You can see just how much data uh, Final Cut has access to. So uh, definitely don't hesitate to go through here, check off the items that you want to see in the view, and uncheck the ones you don't. And that'll allow you to create those views. This little menu at the lower left allows you to create a new view, uh, save a view, or you can restore the default for these included views here. Cool, and then the final thing I want to show here in the inspector, in the info inspector, is this option at the bottom to apply a custom name. What this lets you do is apply a name to this clip based on some data that's included. And I'm going to hit edit at the bottom here to show you these various views. But this is all data that can come off of a camera or the file and automatically rename your clips. So if you're used to recording on a camera, you might have seen something like file 003 or some various names that the files are actually called coming from the camera. And a lot of that is very useless information. So if you have names back here, like we have names that are set up for scene four, and uh, I believe it's shot 65, take three. Like these names are very helpful because they're, they're actual names that are relevant. But if your clip names are called, you know, a date and time, maybe they're just gibberish to you. It's, it's when the, it was recorded in the order of the camera. You can go through and create these custom name presets and then all the files will be renamed based on the, the data that's used. So right now, this was clip date and time. So based on the original clip date, the clip time, and a span, it'll put those on there. Or we can do the counter, for example. So you'll have a custom name, whatever you put in is your custom name down here, with a counter, and it'll go through and do that for you. So all kinds of options there to rename and apply custom names to clips, and that can be done here in the Inspector of Final Cut if you want to get to that level of organization of your clips.